you welcome to my channel in this video we shall be handling one of the components of working capital which is cash yeah we shall be handling cash management and the working business concerns need cash to make payments for acquisition of resources services for the normal conduct of the business and cash is one of the most important and key parts of current assets yeah cash is the most liquid of all the current assets so it's the common denominator to which all current assets can be reduced because other current assets can later be converted into cash receivables can be converted into cash inventory can be converted into cash so cash management is very important management of cash consists of cash inflows cash outflows cash flow within the concern and cash balances held by the concern etc cash is the basic input because it's used to acquire all the inputs it's used to acquire labor it's used to acquire land and other things and then it's the ultimate output expected by investors after everything investors expect to receive cash so it's the basic input and the ultimate output at the same time now let's look at the motives for holding cash why do people hold cash yeah, and there are four major reasons as to why people hold cash and the first reason is transaction motive it's a motive for holding cash or near cash to meet routine cash requirements to finance transactions in the normal course of the business cash is needed to make purchases of raw materials to pay expenses to pay taxes to pay dividends therefore people hold cash for transaction motive or businesses keep cash in their businesses so that they can be able to make daily transactions then let's look at the second motive and the second motive for holding cash is precautionary motive or rain day it's a motive for holding cash on your cash as a caution to meet unexpected emergencies yeah it's like securing the future cash is needed to meet the unexpected situations like floods strikes and other things then the third motive the third motive for holding cash is speculative motive it's the motive for holding cash to quickly take advantage of opportunities typically outside the normal course of business speculative speculative motive you hold cash in order for you to make profits out of holding cash you buy a dollar at a cheaper price and then sell it at a higher price that's what we call speculative motive you hold cash in order for you to take advantage of the opportunities yeah there can also be an opportunity of buying raw materials at a reduced price or to make purchases at favorable prices therefore people hold cash in order for them to take quick advantage of the opportunities that come up then the last motive for holding cash is the compensating motive the compensating motive it's a motive for holding cash to compensate banks for providing certain services or loans maybe you hold cash in order for you to pay interest to the bank after you acquiring a loan so those are the four motives of holding cash compensating motive speculative motive precautionary motive and then the transaction motive now let's look at the cash management techniques the two techniques of managing cash the first technique is speed cash collections and another one is slowing disbursements so we are going to look at one by one in details let's start with speed cash collections business concerns must concentrate in the field of speed cash collections from customers speed cash collections is like you collect money earlier from the people that you're demanding you as a business from your debtors you encourage them to 
prepare as early as possible and these are some of the speed cash collection techniques how you can be able to collect money earlier from the data first is prompt payment by customers business concern should encourage the customer to pay promptly with the help of offering discounts special offers etc it helps to reduce the delay of payment by customers and the firm can avoid delays from the customers the firm may use some of the techniques of prompt payments like billing devices self address cover with stamp etc so you, you you can offer discounts to your customers to encourage them to make prompt payments to pay earlier another technique is early conversion of payments into cash businesses should take careful action regarding the quick conversion of payment into cash yeah when they give you a check maybe you make sure that you turn it earlier into cash another technique is concentration banking it's a collection procedure in which payments are made through regionally dispersed collection centers and deposited in lock banks for quick clearing it's a system for decentralized billing and multiple collection points whereby a, a data can pay from wherever they are they, 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 they do not have to first move if they're in gulu they can pay you when they're in gulu using the banks in gulu when they're in lira they can pay you when in lira when they're in kampala they can easily pay you so you have very many collection points it can help you to collect money easily from your data and the last technique is lockbox system Lockbox system is a collection procedure in which payers send their payments or checks to nearby post box and it's cleared by the firm's bank. Yeah, it can help you to collect money easily from data. Then let's look at another technique of managing cash which is slowing disbursement. Slowing disbursement is like delaying payments to creditors to the people that are demanding you an effective cash management is not only in the part of speed cash collections of cash and receivables but should also concentrate on slowing their disbursements of cash to their customers or suppliers you delay paying paying your suppliers it can help you to manage cash well instead of using that money to pay suppliers earlier you can first use it for other things and then pay them later and the following are the techniques of slowing disbursement or slowing payments to suppliers the first one is avoiding early payment of cash the firm should pay the payables only on the last day of the payment if the firm avoids early payment of cash the firm can retain the cash with it and can be used for other purposes so you can avoid early payment of cash another technique of slowing disbursement is centralized disbursement system decentralized collection system will provide speed cash collections hence centralized disbursement of cash system makes time for collection from our accounts like you when you have one place where you can be able to pay from when you're in lira you be like you wait when i come back to kampala i'll pay you because i can only be able to pay from kampala that is what we call centralized disbursement system but you can also delay disbursement by playing the float float is the difference between the company's checkbook balance and the balance shown in the bank's books of accounts playing the float is when you keep making mistakes when you're writing checks in order for you to buy time in order for you to buy time to use the money for other things as the bank keeps dishonoring checks you write other checks like that the firm can also slow disbursements by changing the frequency it pays its employees for example if the firm has been paying the employees weekly they can change to a monthly basis 
yeah it will help them to slow disbursements or to delay payments yeah and those were the two cash management te techniques the first one was speed cash collections and the second one was slowing disbursements then let's look at cash planning cash planning involves operation of forecast of cash receipts and payments to give an idea for the business future performance like you you estimate the future receipts of the business and payments in order for you to give an idea of the of how the business will perform in the future that's what we call cash planning cash planning helps the financial manager in three ways first is to have an insight into the future's financial needs or payments that need to be paid in future then to formulate policies to deal with cash balances if it's a surplus he'll come up with favorable policies if it's a deficit he'll come up with favorable policies then to evaluate the impact of future business decisions on the liquidity position of the firm yet to evaluate the consequences of future business decisions on the ability of the firm to meet its short-term obligations let's look at liquidity position liquidity position refers to the ability of a firm to get cash when they need it or the ability of a firm to meet its short-term obligations and the two determinants of liquidity position the ability of a firm to turn current assets into cash when they need it and the debt capacity the ability of a firm to meet its debt obligations then profitability position profitability position is the ability of a business to earn a profit and as a result of cash planning we we come up with a cash budget so in our next video we shall be handling cash budget thanks for watching don't forget to subscribe like comment share with your friends see you in my next video